Well, let's talk about the deal. I yeah, cool, man. making some money. <laughs> let's make some money. All right, what's your ARB? Well, you know, I was listening to Jeff speak on the line the other day about, you know, setting your ARV lower than higher because of what's going on now. But I don't know. Let's leave that. Let's say this, that the guy told me that this potential buyer he spoke with before our first meeting offered him 60, said he was going to put 15 in it and put it on the market for 145. And I think right now that 145 as a retail price on this house finished is probably not far off. Great. All right. What's your price? Well, I was thinking if I get, you know, get. No, I mean, what's your purchase price? Oh, 85. Okay. And he owes how much? 60. Great. So, shoot, man. And what's the monthly payment? 600. And what could you rent it for? His estimate says 950. That's great, man. Smoking deal. Yeah. And nothing down, right? Well, yeah, this is this was my big failure on the deal. I, I gave him four thousand dollars down to move. That's all right. That's but not I the end of the world. Lose the deal, you know. Uh, my feeling is that this is a deal. This is a house. You know, this is a house that I can make money off of. Yes. You definitely. know, I've gotten close with some buyers or talked to some buyers who were maybe up to it, but I looked at the house and the numbers and I was like, you know can I make this work? But, yeah. you know, I, I knew right away, even though this house needs certain types of work, that this was something that I can make work and make something. Yeah. Like now, could somebody house. move into the house right now and fix it up while they're in it? Yes. That's what I want to do. Okay, great. And then what would you say is just the ballpark repairs estimate? Would, would you say the, uh, I'd say 20 is a good allowance for a buyer to do the repairs that are necessary. So, uh, the furnace is you, a little oldish, but he mm -hmm. had it looked at and it's still working. So it could go out in a year or it could last for five more yeah. years. Doesn't and matter. This, you know, the, the air conditioner is new. Uh, the Great. venting was checked by the HVAC person and passed, what, three, $4,000. Yeah. So what what it, uh, what will be your selling price? I'm sorry. I was thinking of doing a 124.9, which that would mean good to me. minus 20. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking you guys like to jack it up for a contract buyer anyway. So I'm thinking I'm like in a really not too high place at that. And I'm yeah. still looking at 40 in equity, 350 a month, cash flow and back end. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You got it, man. It's a matter of finding a buyer who wants to put the work in. But the thing is, most of the work is really cosmetic. You know, it's floors, floor coverings, paint, a little bit of trim. There's some sheetrock stuff that's damaged that I think I might repair before trying to sell it just for the visual. And I mean, for the 500 bucks, it'll cost me to have a sheetrock issue repaired i think I'll how many square feet is this house james what's that how many square feet two thousand okay yeah you're probably about right for twenty thousand bucks might be a little less but <clears throat> that could that's a smoking hot deal even for yeah. a buyer 124.9 you could probably charge more should i try and charge more which well, brings me to another question if i set my contract dealer price at this i've heard you guys say that you don't budge at all yeah well before you said 124.9 the number i had in my head was 129.9 i okay. think you go e either one of those i mean he here's the kind of the dirty little secret price just don't matter that much because you know four times out of five they ain't gonna Not cash gonna you out it. all right you see what i mean right so i'm looking for the down payment yeah. And you probably get 10 out of the, the guy, the down payment on from your buyer, because mm -hmm. he's going to come in and say, well, you know, I need to hold on to some of my cash so I can fix up the house. And that's good, too, because he's going to fix up your house. 
Exactly. I've thought about that, which I'm sure you beat me to the punch. But uh, <laughs> the thing with this house is, is that, you know, it, it, it's a nice house. I, I think someone, you know, who might get in there might wind up keeping it. You know. Well, then that's what I was thinking as well. I mean, with the rehabable property, someone's going to go in with the idea they're going to do the work. They're probably, you know, is a stronger than one out of five chance they'll close, maybe 50-50, let's say. Right. And that's a $45,000 payday for you. That whole deal right there. One twenty nine nine buying at 85. That's, I mean, I mean, how many of those do you need to do a month? Yeah, I'm happy. Half? I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> the quarter so you know you don't need to do a lot of those to make some serious money hey can we talk about how much i've been struggling you know where this deal came from yeah let's hear it you know i set up my website and because of my budget limitations i've been trying to hit the phones which have been a bit of a failure because of my time restrictions and like how much stuff i have on my plate but I, I had set up the website and I had it parked there. I'm not marketing it, but it's there. And I don't know what this guy did that other people aren't doing, but he Googled this site and found it and punched that form out. So right now I know my numbers are going to go down, but on my website, I'm one for one. <laughs> nice hundred <laughs> percent but you know he googled this site and found it and bang there it is and like with the negotiating you know i know i offer him a little too much on the down payment but you know most of this ride my mouth has been and he's just talked his way through the whole thing you know? yep yep and like Oh, this is what a motivated seller acts like. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm glad you're experiencing it's this. It's a matter of finding them, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And we're beating our heads against these people that don't want to sell this way, right? Yeah. Blair and I have tried for years to explain that feeling to people. We need to, get to <laughs> reduce that to writing now or, or put a video together so you can explain that feeling of, oh, this is what a motivated seller feels like to everybody else here. Well, I will say that Blair captured it very great with his first house where he said, I got to the house and I realized pretty soon that this woman wasn't going to allow me to leave without me buying her house. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And it, you're going to see more and more of those right now. Yeah. Well, I, because here's the thing. All of the real estate agents in the country are now having to learn what we've been teaching everybody for over a year. I just saw, it. You, see, you just look on Facebook, it's like, oh, we're all virtual now, you know? Well, we got a lot of real estate agents in Pipeline, right? We have we have a number of them, We have yes. a few, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're the smart ones. Thumbs up now. Yeah, maybe. So, James, in your previous email to me, you told the story of how you were about to, you were just like thinking of quitting. And yeah. Then, I was, so tell us I that, that story. Quitting. You know, I started the program, I had, I paid for the program and I had nine grand that I put into the bank to get it rolling. And I've been paying out in Mojo and CallRail and on Carrot and struggling with all this. And in all fairness, you, you know, I'm trying to do this with a lot on my plate. So I'm busting this out in minutes and seconds. And, and I got to the point well, let me preface it with this. Uh, my mom passed away in December, actually. Oh, I'm sorry to hear morning. that. So that took a lot of wind out of my sails for a couple of months. I know I told you, Blair, that I was ready for a quantum leap, but, you know, I got the wind blown out of my sails. But the point is, and the takeaway is, is that I stuck into it. And what happened was when I made the decision, look, I'm, I don't have the resources for this. I'm going to take the rest of the money out and sink my credit card debt. And just that decision right there sparked me. And I was like, no, I don't want to do this. No, this is, it's not easy, but it seems so simple. How, how can I quit? You know what I mean? So that's how it unfolded. And then, you know, out of the blue, this guy came in and bang, but, you know, I'm thinking this guy isn't an angel. This guy is just one that got through and I need to do the numbers and keep working it. Mm -hmm. But, 
you know, the esteem charge from making signing that first deal is you can't put a number on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, where I've been acting as if and trying to pretend I know what I'm saying, and you know, when that seller asks you that question that stumps you up, they know, oh, this guy doesn't, isn't really instilling confidence in me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I've stayed with it and I worked it. And, you know, a lot of Chris Voss's teachings I was using throughout this negotiation. And I've also noticed that you incorporate a lot of what he says into your simple instructions as how to get through the meetings and deal. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that is I'm great. Sorry I'm like such a slow learner, a slow learner, but hey, yeah. I'm still yeah. here. We're doing a deal. Who wins, yeah. who wins the race, the tortoise or the hare? Well, I'm the tortoise in this in this instance, but I'm still going. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you for sharing that story, James. I appreciate it. And congrats again, of course. Thank you. Thank you. I will try to live up to this first success. I know that, it, you know, I'm not at, across the finish line by any means. I understand. Sure. I know that now I have to work even harder to make my second and third deal and to turn this into an actual business. Yep. But it's hard, you know, it, in concept, it's simple, but if you're starting from a point where you don't have all these inf this information and skills, it is a struggle. I mean, you do have to work yep. and not quit. Like you say, the only way to fail is to quit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, now you've got the tiniest bit of momentum, and that is everything right now. So you got to not let that die. Keep going. The tiniest thing bit. Sold. Just imagine. Contract is like a box of dynamite for me, man. Exactly. See? <laughs> and, and the big picture is nothing. So you got to just keep going, man. Just don't lose that. You know, I, I know you just said it. You know, you got a lot of work to do to turn this into a business, and you're on your way, man. Right. But I've made the first hurdle. That's right. I've worked hard for it. I'm not a two-month-in-the-program first deal, you know. I've been yeah. working for it. Yeah. Right. I love it. There's another contingent of, you know, the population. Some of us have to work a little harder, and that's how it is. All right. Well, take your victory lap and then get back out there and do it again. Yeah. We'll, we'll get two I'll, more signed I'll up. Back again with my second and third deal. All right. Sounds good.